Hello and welcome back again. So this is uh, second part, the second part of section 1.3 and it's about closed sets or closed subsets of R. Okay, so by definition, a subset of R is said to be closed if its complement is open. And this means that its complement satisfies the condition that I formulated in the last video. Okay. So since not all sets are open, it means that not all sets are closed. So closedness, if you like, is also a property of the set. So some sets may possess this property. Some sets need not possess this property. And so, for example, how do, you know, do we know that the interval AB with endpoints included is a closed set? Well, if you want to go back to the definition, just look at the complement. What is the complement of AB? Is the union of the interval minus, sorry, this is minus infinity here. So minus infinity A, union B plus infinity. Now, this is open. We proved that. Okay. And this is also open. And the union of two open sets is an open set. So this is open. Okay. So the complement of AB is open. And therefore, AB with endpoints included is an open, is a closed set. It's a closed set. Now, the closed set A infinity is also closed. Why? Because look at the complement, right? The complement of A infinity is minus infinity A open, okay? And similar for a similar reason, the complement of this is A plus infinity. So both are closed, even though we don't put a closed sign here because infinity cannot put a closed sign here because infinity is not a real number. So it's always open here, okay? Now, n, z and n are closed. Why? Because we proved in the last video that the complement of z is open. And we indicated the proof why the complement of n is also open. So, all these sets are open. But the, n and z are not intervals. So, not every, so every closed interval is closed, right? But uh, the converse is not true. So, there are closed sets which are not intervals. Okay? The empty set and the whole line are also closed. Why? Because look at the complement. What is the complement of the empty set? It's R, but R is open. What is the complement of R? It's the empty set. The empty set is open. Okay? So, and of course, one-point sets are closed. Why? Because the complement of a, clo of a singleton is the disjoint union of two intervals, minus infinity A union A infinity. This is open. This is open. So, the complement of the singleton is open and therefore the singleton is closed. Okay? Now, a remark, a set which is not open is not necessarily closed. Okay? For example, this interval open at zero, closed at one, is neither open nor closed. But also a set can be both open and closed. For example, the, the empty set and R are both open and closed. Okay? according to our definition. Now, we can prove, which I'll prove later next year, that in R, these are the only closed and open subsets at the same time. We call them clopen, if you like. Okay, so in R, these are the only, these two, empty set and R, are the only clopen subsets of R. Okay? But this is not trivial. Now, of course, I didn't give examples of non-closed sets. You can easily give. Just think of how do I, for example, give me an example of a non, okay, this is, of course, this is not closed, okay? This is an example of, uh, try to search for other examples, okay, of non-closed. <clears throat> now, when we talked about open sets, we talked about the interiors, the interior of a set. Now, there's also the notion of closure. By definition, the closure of a set A is the smallest closed set containing A. And we usually denote it by A bar, sometimes by CL of A. Okay? The elements of A bar. Uh, are called the adherent points of A, or the closure points of A, or the contact points of A. For example, 
What is the closure of the open interval 0, 1? I hope that many of you will guess that it's the closed interval 0, 1. Why? How do you prove that? First of all, so, okay. First of all, 0, 1 closed is a closed set containing 0, 1. We know that. Uh, we, okay. We know that this is closed according to our definition because its complement is open. Okay. Therefore, but this is the, okay, but the closure of 0, 1 is the smallest closed set containing this one. So it's contained in that one. So like the case of the interior of 0, 1 that we uh, encountered in the previous video, the closure of 0, 1 is between two sets, between this one and this one, and it's a closed set. So the only possible, there are just four sets contained between these two, or equal, of course. So we have 0, 1 open, 0, 1 semi-open, 0, 1 semi-closed, and 0, 1 closed. None, okay, the only one which is closed is this one. These are not closed because the complement is not open, okay? And so we get our results. Our results, so the closure of 0, 1 open is 0, 1 closed. Okay, so everything follows from the definition. And for a similar reason, I can take instead of the open interval 0, 1, <clears throat> the semi open 0, 1, and I get, or the semi open, semi close 0, 1. So exactly the same thing. <clears throat> uh -huh. Now, the closure of Q is more complex actually. Um, we shall prove it. It's not as easy as the, the, pre the previous examples, but we shall prove that we shall prove it in the next video. Actually, we shall prove that the closure of Q is R. So the smallest closed subset containing Q is R itself. Of course, it cannot be Q because Q is not closed. Why Q is not closed? Because R without Q is not open. Okay. And similarly, so we say in this case that Q is dense in R. And there are other sets that are also dense in R. Okay. Also, the irrationals are dense in R. The set of irrational number, numbers is dense in R. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, I think I will stop here for this video. And I will leave you with two exercises, okay? The first one is very easy. Uh, they, actually, both are easy. So try to solve them on your own. The first exercise proves that a set is closed if and only if it is equal to its closure. Second exercise, if A is bounded from above, then A bar is also bounded from above. If A is bounded from below, then A bar is also bounded from below. Therefore, if A is bounded, shorty, bounded from above and below, then A bar is also bound. And this is a very useful result. Okay, so I think I will stop here uh, for this week, although uh, the remainder of the section is, uh, is ready. But I want to give you enough time to organize yourself because I know that you have other courses to take and it's, uh, we are just experimenting now. So uh, I think it's enough. I will stop for this week. And next week, I will, give, I will, give, I will upload the remainder of the videos. So I will finish this chapter. And I will post also the exercises that we shall solve. But I think now you have already enough exercises and things to check. Uh, okay, so thank you for your attention and see you next time.